you can make a lot of things with one ingredient, eggs. Deviled eggs, quiche, even cake. The same ingredient used in different ways. The Pecha Kusha process identified two themes for me. Discovering what my ingredients were and finding out I could use them in different ways. It would surprise me if your upbringing was anything like mine. We were artistic, musical, atheist, but I had no idea what I myself could do. I thought it had to be just one thing, but what I'd inherited was creativity. The first clues seemed clear in hindsight. In elementary school, I wrote my first songs, put together my first band, loved essay questions, and kids would ask me to check their papers. Mom and Dad were loving and encouraging, but when Dad said I could be the US president, he was thinking of his own passion. We lived in DC because he'd been asked by Presidents Kennedy and Johnson to pass Medicare. Big act to follow, right? Growing up in DC, we went to art museums. I learned all kinds of cool things. Turns out, I should have been noticing my mom's side of the family. Editors, writers, singers, linguists. These ladies started an editorial business in the 30s and actually edited the dictionary. My high school electives provided more clues. Commercial art, photography, drama, languages. But when I was 13, dad suddenly left and he and my brother moved a thousand miles away, literally. I graduated from high school. My mom and her new husband moved to Connecticut. And there I was at 17, solo in Maryland. College fund had disappeared and I needed a full-time job. I tried waitressing. I was really bad at it. Telemarketing, better. Typing, helpful. Secretary was not what I'd been taught to aim for, but I learned about business and technology, and people kept asking me to check their documents. I put myself through night school for 12 years, searching for direction, any clue at all. I gave music another shot in Nashville, but ended up in Connecticut, started more bands, and learned some new languages, shorthand, coding, proofreading symbols. But it was journalism that made my heart beat faster. I finally landed a job that I liked, corporate communication specialist, a title, that's what I'd wanted. But that job fell apart. I became a Kelly girl and typed all day long for a year. My title, word processor. Thankfully, I was hired and began proofreading fascinating items like bill inserts. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'd met a fabulous man, Dave, my husband of 35 years, and we had a daughter. I'd also encountered the love of God, and my songs told stories of transformation. The ingredients that made me me were becoming clearer. When we moved to York, I got a better camera, put together small groups and more bands, and started writing articles and skits. Perhaps I had my great-grandmother's chutzpah or my grandmother's entrepreneurial streak. I started a proofreading business with no degree to back up my abilities. So I struggled with shame when people would ask me about my education. 400 cold calls later, thank you, telemarketing, I landed my first client. Soon my clients started wanting me to wear several hats, editor, photographer, copywriter. Then a hat I didn't want flew on, Lyme disease. Despite chronic pain, I joined the Chamber of Commerce and they became one of my best clients. I over-networked. I snagged a 15-year writing and photography give, uh, gig with Susquehanna style for getting us into Louis Appel's garden. All I'd learned had prepared me to write about a bunch of stuff, interview people, and tell their stories. Being on stage had prepared me well, so I created a line of seminars. I experienced art as spiritual processing at a retreat center called Kavana House. I began to thrive through the joy of creating and being fully loved by God. Then the line got worse, and I had to take six months off work. Fast forward and COVID. I began accumulating rejection letters from magazine and for the novel I'd written. My creative tribe helped me to say, my business is failing. Good, what's next? I created a game that helps people connect. <laughs> then the retreat center closed. There at my other home, my community, and my refuge. I never saw my new calling coming. A friend suggested I become a wedding officiant and I said no, then Maybe, then heck yeah. I launched Susquehanna Officiant, feeling like all my experience was finally coming into play, like all the wedding articles, the typing, the interviewing fit together. I tried adding it as a sideline to my business, but it was clear I'd have to take one of the hats off. 
Letting go of my identity I'd had for 27 years was not, not an easy task. But I kept my camera, and I began to see that cre creativity looks different in different seasons. Hashtag I love York City. I spent a lot of time downtown. I found the art community welcoming, and one of them introduced me to weaving. And the thing is, I can't stop weaving. As I make them, names and personalities come up, and I just had my first exhibit last month. These two COVID pivots called on ingredients that had been there all along. I get to write wedding blessings and prayers, sometimes even in Spanish, still forget to eat when I take off with my camera, and typically have paint on my hands. What I do now, I've done my whole life. It just looks different. Whether I have a red pen, a wedding ceremony, or a hunk of gorgeous yarn in my hands, I am simply a creative. So the same ingredients, eggs, creativity, showing up in a variety of forms. It hasn't been a typical career path, but it's always included creating, communicating, and connecting. For me, that's a 10.